a new tank and a new mod from a brand new company that I've never even heard of. The company is called Wismec and the product is called the Pressa and the Amor. Stay tuned. Hey everybody and welcome back to this edition of the Vapor Chronicles. Very often, you know, we get used to companies and the names and the branding and the and the, the version 2, version 3. But every once in a while, a new product gets released that I've never heard of. And this company, Wismec, contacted me and they said, Brian, do you want to review our products? And I said, well, let me check out your website. So I went to the website. As soon as I saw the pictures and the designs and it just something said say yes so I said yes they sent me a whole kit I have um, unregulated tube device that I've been testing that's so awesome I have this mod control head that you know you screw onto a tube mech device and it gives you a 30 watt regulated device built in um, that's not what I'm reviewing tonight but I have all this cool stuff I have this Bambino RDA that I'm looking at there's just so much cool stuff. They sent me a whole bunch of stuff. But the two things that I've really, really been enjoying all weekend long are the Pressa and the Amor. Okay? I'm impressed. They are stunning. I mean, you know, you, you don't, I didn't even know what I missed until I got it. And now it's hard for me to go back to other devices because they don't have this same amazing firing uh, trigger. The whole side of the device allows you to fire it. A small, stealthy, portable device, 40 watts, 2,600 milliamp hours, and the prices that I've seen are like between 32 and 42 dollars for the for the mod. At a tank, I think the tank's going to be around 15 to 20 dollars, and um, and the coil heads look like they're from Joytech. I even think for that the Wismac company is sort of like a um, you know a brother company or sister company to Joytech, Ismoka. Wismec, I think they're all sort of connected. So, you know, the quality is top notch, metallic outside, OLED screen. But let's do this. Let's dive in. Let's take a look. And then uh, we'll break them down. And I'll come back out and I'll tell you what I think. We'll go for a vape. All right, let's dive in. All right, guys. So here is the outside of the package for the Wismec Pressa 40 watt and the Wismec Amor tank. And let's open up the box for the Pressa first and then we'll take a look at the Amor. Really nice packaging, um, very detailed user manual that's stylishly done. I recommend reading that. In your kit you also get your micro USB charging cable and your 510 to Ego adapter. Alright, so that's everything in the kit. Now I did test the micro USB charging port to see what it charges at and I'll show you the uh, charging location is right here at the bottom and this plugs in like so and what happens is this will start to flash when it's charging and then once it's fully charged the light goes out so you'll know it's fully charged. It, it looks like um, I checked on my amp checker and uh, thanks Daniel from uh, DJ LSB Labs. He recommended that I pick up one of these uh, Amperage charger checkers and um, I did and here you go. So it looks like it's about one amp for charging. So it takes about three hours to charge, th three and a half max. And um, so that's that. Okay, so let's run down some specs and features of this. So they co this comes in two different colors. It comes in silver and black. It has a 2600 milliamp hour battery capacity. 
rated output wattage of 5 watts to 40 watts and a rated output voltage of 2 volts to 10 volts. It has a rated resistance range of 0.2 ohms to 5 ohms. It does have an OLED screen. It does have a variable wattage and variable voltage selectability so you can switch between the two. It does have an enhanced button lock function which I'll show you once we get to the screen function. It does have a temperature protection function. It does have a 510 spring loaded connection. So let's take a look at the Amor. Here's the outside of the package. Once again, real stylish packaging. Little user manual, real simple. There's the extra coil head. Here's the tank. <clears throat> and that's it. sits very nicely on here which we'll take a look at. All right, so let's run down some specs for the Amor tank. So the Amor can support two different types of atomizer heads catering to different vaping habits. The parameters are the diameter is 22 millimeters. It holds 2.5 millimeter of juice capacity. It comes in silver color and it comes with a 1 ohm and a 0.5 ohm resistance coil and each one of those has a different airflow capacity so if you like a mouth to lung you'd want to use the 1 ohm and if you like a direct lung you can use the 0.5 ohm. In your kit you get the mouthpiece, you get the atomizer tube, you get the two atomizer heads, the 1 ohm and the 0.5 and the atomizer base. It does come with a frosted glass tube, adjustable airflow control, bottom filling liquid and they do recommend that you keep the liquid level between 10% and 90%, and that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at the tank real quick. And it's really a simple tank. Um, I've been vaping this all weekend together, and uh, I've been switching between the black and the silver mod, and this is a brand new tank. I haven't used it, but I have been using the black version. And you can see I've been using the tank on that. It would have been nice if this was black, um, but it, you know, it's still, it contrasts a little bit, but it still works well. Um, and it's been functioning really well. Two and a half milliliters is a small juice capacity amount, but you know, it's a stealthy vape. So it's really up to you. I mean, you can put any tank on here. I mean, I was running a Joytech um, Delta II tank on here. And you know, if you want more juice capacity, you know this is suited for that also it's not that awkward but I think that you know the purpose of this is a small stealthy vape it's really easy to fill and to be honest with you you know this sort of reminds me of an Ego One tank um, the coil heads are identical to the Joytech coil heads and they vape the same um, this has been running at 40 watts all weekend the, the 0.5 ohm coil that's in here it does have this glass drip tip let's zoom in so you have this glass drip tip it is removable uh, with two o-rings so if you wanted to change your uh, drip tip you could do that or you could leave this one on there and <clears throat> you know it just has a really clean fresh look when you put this on here it just it, it's well suited for this mod you know really really clean and it looks great paired with it but if you want more juice capacity like I said you can put anything you want on here all right so adjustable airflow control here both sides and to fill your tank you would just go counterclockwise unscrew the base and there's your coil head. Now the coil head that comes in the unit is the one ohm coil head. And you know this setup, I'm telling you, it, it would be great for a beginner vapor, it would be great, I'm an experienced vapor and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. This has become and gonna become my all day vape on the road device. Um, this is the 0.5 ohm coil head and you can see that 
it basically is the Joytech uh, coil, 0.5. It just produces a flavorful vape. It handles 40 watts really well, and it wicks well. It's don't let the small size uh, deceive you. It really does handle a good vape. It's a vertical coil, huge airflow, and it's straight through. So you can see, nice airflow. Now the, the one ohm head is much smaller. You can see the diameter of the opening in the middle. So this is going to be a much tighter draw, but it still goes all the way through. It's just not nearly as open. But there's the two coil heads. So you fill your tank from here, two and a half milliliters of juice. So you fill it up from the bottom here, and we'll do that right now. I'm gonna put some kilo cereal milk in here. This was sent to me by Wet Vapes. And let's drip some juice. So all you wanna to do to fill this is drip at an angle right into the side here, no problem. I'm going to measure just so I know exactly how much goes in here. So let's fill this up. There you go. Two and a half milliliters of juice. I do recommend that when you have your coil, just drip a little bit of uh, juice right into the opening of the coil head, and a couple drips will do you. You just want to get that wick sort of saturated a little bit when you start it. And then you can screw your coil into the base, just like so. And then screw your base into the tank here. You know, this is not an advanced tank. It's not like a top fill. It doesn't, you know, have a huge amount of features. But when paired with this small stealthy device, I think it makes a good pairing and I can recommend it. The flavor's good, the coils you know, work really well, and um, it just looks good as a, as a pairing. But if you want more juice capacity, feel free to use any tank you'd like, because I've used a few and they work really well. So as you can see here, <coughs> the tank sits flush. There's a little tiny overhang here. It's uh, I think it was designed that way. There's an air inlet for bottom air tanks. There is a lip at the top and there's a reason for that and I'll show you that in a minute. But let's take this off for a sec. We have a really really well done spring loaded 510 right here. Stainless steel threads here. This is a lock switch for the button. This is your button right here. This whole entire thing is the button, which is probably the most innovative and cool design of this whole entire device here. Um, this is your wattage and voltage adjustment up, wattage and voltage adjustment down. Um, little press a logo here. This is your OLED screen. There's your bottom and there's your charging port at the bottom here. Real simple. This is a metal case. Um, it has some nice weight to it. It feels very, very robust and strong. The finish is very well done on it. Um, there's no defects that I saw. The screen is nice and flush here. It just it, it feels and looks very, very high quality and I love it. Uh, just to give you an idea of size before we go look at the screen, so here's an IPV Mini, I think it's a V2, and this is the Pressa. Now th these aren't really the same class devices, I just want to give you an idea of size. Here's an iStick 20 watt. So as you can see, very similar in size to the iStick 20 watt. A tiny bit taller here, um, but this is 20 watts. Even the 30 watt iStick would be the same except for the little kick lip that they have, but I mean that's pretty much what you're looking at. And here is an IPV Mini, or a um, Cloudpour Mini, to compare. So 
So there you go. All right, guys, just to show you size, because I know a lot of people feel that size matters. Some people don't. Some people don't think size matters. I, I don't know. Some people think it's how you use it, the size, not the size. It's still up in the air. All right, so let's put a tank on here, and let's take a look at the screen. The first thing you need to know is that if you hold this, these two buttons before you turn on the, the device for two seconds, the screen flips, it rotates. So if you're left-handed or right-handed before you turn it before you turn it on, you can do the flip screen. Now this button here locks the trigger. So when you have this to the left to the right, this does not move. See, but when you push it to the left, it does go in, and it's not on right now, so it's still not going to fire. Um, but if you hit it five times, one, two, three, four, five, it turns on the device. Okay. So to lower your wattage, you hold this button. Look how fast that picks up speed. Goes all the way down to 10 watts. All the way up to 40 watts. It shows you your battery life indicator, your resistance, your voltage, and your wattage. If you wanna see voltage as the big number there, you hit this three times, one, two, three, and it switches to voltage. Okay. It does support a resistance that goes all the way down to 0.2 ohms. You could go up to a total of 10 volts. It also has the ability to lock your um, settings. So say you turn this up. I've had this at 40 watts. So if we turn this all the way up to 40, If you want to make it so if you hit these buttons, it doesn't adjust anything, you hold these two together when the device is on. And you can see it locks. So now if you hit these, it's not going to do anything, but you can still vape. There is also a vape timer. Okay. And it seems to start within like less than a half of a second. All right. I love the design of this trigger, this squeeze. It's so accurate, it's so easy to push, it's so easy to, to fire the device. Every device should have this now. I mean, this is really, in my opinion, the future of buttons. Like, screw circular buttons of finding them. You know, there's no comparison. I mean, here's a button here, having to push that. This is just any way you do it. You do it here, it fires. You do it here, it fires. You do it here, it fires. Everywhere on the, on the side of this device. And, um, and then if, you, if you're worried about hitting it, well, you can one, two, three, four, five, turns it off. One, two, three, four, five, turns it on. Or you can slide this to the side and, you know, it locks it so it doesn't fire at all. Only one real flaw that I've come across with this, and it's not really even a flaw. The button, there's not a rattle on this thing. Nothing. No rattles, no loose, no, I mean, it's just quality. It, it's built tough and it's tiny. Okay, the whole entire thing is really, really small. Um, the only thing I would say, if they were going to do a revision, would be when you push this, it's quiet. But when you let go, the metal hits the top here when it comes back up. Not loud. It's just like a little bing. Now, if it's in your hand, you don't hear it. But if you hit it like this and just let go, not that you even would, but you can hear it. So if they put like a little pad under here or something to dampen that, that would be cool. But besides that, I can wholeheartedly recommend this. Um, I love it. I'm in love with it. It's wonderful, wonderful. Great for a stealthy on-the-go package. It's not going to be for you super sub-ohm cloud chasers, even though it does fire down to 0.2 ohms. 2600 milliamp hour is more than enough for taking it to work, but not going to be enough when you go to like a 0.2 ohm coil for an all-day vape. All right, guys. Let's zoom back out and let's take the Pressa for a vape. All right, guys, so I'm impressed. Are you impressed? Um, it's not going to be for everyone, but it's a great starter mod. It's a great um, experience vapor mod that just wants something for the go. It's sexy. It's innovative. The design is really neat. The button is phenomenal. Once you, once you try this button, this is the future of buttons. Mark my words. I said it right here first on the Vapor Chronicles. Now, there might be another button on the market like this, but I've never had a device. The only one that comes close is there was a smoke 
box mod that you could squeeze and the, it sort of moved in with the, the, with the device. That was the first time I experienced something like this. Um, but for a tiny little stealthy unit, this is the first of its kind that I've seen. Let's take this for a vape. So this is a 40 watts and uh, everything's wicked up and ready to go. Let's put it on this because this has had a chance to get, I've been using this all weekend. And I have my little dot mod drip tip on here to make it even shorter. And uh, let's try it. These little coil heads, the 0.5 ohms, can take 40 watts all day. They vape really, really well. The flavor is excellent. The airflow is really good. It's not going to be the most open draw, but it's not the most constricted draw. It's good. It's good for this kit. It really is. It's suited well for it. Great vapor production great flavor. I've also used the one ohm coil heads and they have a nice tight restricted draw. Think Ego One coils, okay? That's what you're going to get. Ego One Mega, Ego One uh, Mini, they're all the same coils and this is what you're going to get from these. But remember, you could put any tank that uses Canthal on this or you could take this tank off and you could put the nickel coils in this, not on the device, but on the tank and use this tank on a, on a temperature controlled device if you wanted to, you know, like the Joytech Evic VT. Um, you know, there's lots of options, and um, this is just a sweet setup. I love the little buttons for adjustment. I love that you can flip the screen, you can lock the, the button, you can turn off the device, you can turn on the device, you know, one amp charging. It's just a win. I, I'm in love. It's a great little device, and you're going to see this in my hands a lot on the Vapor Chronicles. So there you have it guys, the Wiss Presa, the Wiss Amor, and there's going to be a heck of a lot more from Wiss because i got a couple devices here that I'm going to take a look at in the next week or two. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what else they have coming in the future because it's a great, they are off to a, a solid start, um, beautifully designed, great functioning devices, and so far so good. It's only been about a week, but I'm going to use them a lot more and I'll let you know in a follow up if I come across any problems or issues. All right. So if you like new unheard of devices, if you like the newest, latest, greatest, why don't you click the button below and subscribe to my channel. I do everything here, all things vape all the time. You can also find me on the web at www.thevaporchronicles.com. And if you love innovation and you love vaping, why don't you do this? Fight for your right to vape. Join me, join the fight, join today, www.casaa.org. That's CASA, and that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you really, really soon right here. Have a good one.